Working motherhood is the hardest job in the world. You have to be on the ball at work, at home, and all the places in between. It can be hard to know what to prioritize and how to fit it all in. Enter Kara Harvey. Kara is the founder of A Purpose Driven Mom and an online mentor who is helping moms to ditch hustle culture and create schedules, goal setting practices, and routines that fit into their lives without feeling overwhelmed and burned out. This conversation is going to help you clarify what matters most to you and how to make that badge of busy mom you've been wearing a thing of the past. I'm Tracy Bingaman. I'm a full-time working mom of five who got sick, burned out, quit my job, and now I teach women how to mom smarter, not harder. The pressures of modern motherhood are intense. You're a busy working mom juggling all the balls and living in fear of dropping the exact wrong one. Here you'll find the tools you've been searching for to confidently prioritize your life and optimize your ability to rock all the hats that you choose to wear. I'll show you how to break through your limiting beliefs so you'll have more time and more money than you know what to do with. Because even in the busiest seasons of life, you can grow to master your money, own your time, and be the mom with all the margin. This is Fulfilled as a Mom. All right, Kara, we know you're an author, an online mentor, a wife, and a mom. Tell us who you are and what matters most to you. Yeah, I think that when people ask, like, who are you? And you you run all those things off. Um, My real thing is I am a recovering perfectionist uh, who got caught into hustle culture and thought it was the only way to live. Like, that really is who I am and who I've, as I get older, I'm nearing 40, like who I'm learning that I was and who I don't want to be anymore. And so I also call myself an accidental entrepreneur. I'm one of those people like I did not mean to be doing this. I was a school teacher for eight years and I absolutely loved it. But I hit burnout right around year seven. And I remember the moment I was the principal of our summer school program. So I was on an administrative track and the last day of summer school overlapped with the first day of regular school. And I sat in my car and I cried because I was like, how am I supposed to do this? But it was expected that I figured it out and that I actually was in two places at once. And I went home that day, I said to my husband, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need something else. And so I cannot stand the word hustle, but I will say, honestly, that's what I did that year. Um, And I was able to dabble a little bit in network marketing enough to leave teaching that eighth year and start to go full-time into network marketing. And I did that for about three years. And the outside, it was super successful looking. Let me tell you, I had 250 people on a team. I had a six-figure business. Like, it looked great. But I was drowning on the inside. Because all the things I did when I was a teacher, the inbox zero, the staying up late, feeling attached to my phone. Like, if I didn't answer every message, I would not be successful. And then feeling like I wasn't successful because some arbitrary rank told me I wasn't successful enough they started to creep back in. And so right around about four years ago now, because I was pregnant with my son, um, I said to my husband, I was like, I think I want to switch. I was like, I know that we're making a decent amount here, uh, but I think I feel a tug to do something different. What do you think if I back up with the network marketing stuff, we just kind of let it roll and I start a new business. And he was like, yeah, great. Well, why not go for it? I believe that you can do it. And I said, okay, but we're good, right? Like we're good financially. If I like play around a little bit, he said, sure. Uh, three weeks later, he's a principal, his school was closed and he was then out of work for eight months. And so the first eight months of my business, we were on government assistance. I was sitting at the food bank. I had gotten a part-time job to just pay so that my, my kids could go to school a little bit so I could figure it out. And, uh, that was four years ago. And in the past four years, I have realized how important it is to do what I call priority-based productivity. And it's about not doing it all at once. It's about picking and choosing what fits for your season. And it's about ending this shame game that we as moms deal with, where it's like if your planner isn't the most full and you don't cross everything off, there's something wrong with you. And so I've been able to put that into my life. And that is what is most important to me is taking that mission and helping other moms who feel like they either need to perform to be worthy or who've lost themselves in motherhood and don't even know what they want anymore and like that spark that they can have a more aligned, not a balanced, but an aligned life that fits what they need. And I think there are so many moms listening who that's going to resonate with because they feel like it should, it should be great because this is what I dreamt of and these kids in this house and this marriage and this life. And like, this is what I thought it would look like, but 
it's not supposed to feel like this. I'm not supposed to feel like every day I'm dreading my life and waking up and just having so much to do. And just like, again, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. There are so many things to do. And we are swept away in that sort of producing, producing like you are, your worth is tied to, you know, what you're doing instead of who you are. So I want to dive into seasonal productivity. So what is this and how can we leverage it as busy working moms? I think seasonal productivity was one of the biggest game changers for me because, you know, January 1st happens, right? And we're like, let's make all the goals and do all the things. And we put a million things on our plate and by February, we're done with most of them, right? And it's because we're trying to attack goal setting in a way that we think we're supposed to. We see other people do. And what was a game changer for me and my clients was this seasonal productivity. So there's so many ways you can look at it. One is like literally seasons, right? Like winter, summer, spring, and fall. But the way I want moms uh, to look at this is to say, what is happening in my life right now and what season am I in? So there's two parts of this. The first is recognizing what your life is like so you can make goals that make sense. So I think about my sister. My nephew is going to be one actually this weekend. But last year, he was a newborn. Her season of life, if she could just pee or maybe shower. (laughs) Brush your teeth. Yes, (laughs) that is great. That is amazing, okay? Whereas me, I I have three kids. They're all in three different schools. So it's incredibly like, you know, we're a Tetris uh, game over here, but it's different. It's just different. And the goals that I'm going after are different for me because of my season. So I think the first step in this whole overarching seasonal productivity concept is just recognizing like, what is your season? And I think about this a lot with work. So for me, Quarter one is always the busiest here. This is our fifth year in March that we're running our summit. Uh, We have almost 5,000 moms that attend. It's a very big project. And so now add the book on top of it, right? So quarter one is go, go, go. I know that quarter one is my busiest season of the year. So these are times where I tell my husband, listen, like we're going to have more takeout. Or maybe because I know it's coming in December, we do a whole bunch of freezer meals. And I say things like, listen, the laundry, I'm going to need some help with that and all of those other tasks. And that has allowed me to alleviate the guilt of feeling like I need to perform at level 100 all the time. And I don't know if you've seen this like analogy that's been going around. Actually, recently, it's a quote, I guess, from Nora Roberts, which talks about rubber balls and glass balls, right? And she says, we're always juggling all the balls, but sometimes... Some of them are glass. Like if they drop, they will break. Some of them are rubber. They're still important, but they will bounce back. And this seasonal productivity piece has allowed me in this season in particular to not feel guilty about the fact that my kids, my family right now, I'm going to be honest, they are a rubber ball for me. They're important. They matter. They're still my priority. But some things are going to have to drop, right? We've stopped some activities, the homemade meal, like all of that we're going to bounce back because right now work is my glass ball. And that allowing myself to not feel guilty over that is incredible, right? So that's like the overarch of what seasonal productivity is. But when you're planning, I teach a concept of four seasons to add into your season. It's like super meta, right? We're like seasons inside of seasons, right? One of the things that I think is important before I tell you these four seasons is I want you to stop caring about your calendar, I think that everybody is like married to the calendar, right? Like I'm, I, I got to do it on Monday. If I didn't plan by Jan, how many women I talked to recently who are like, but I didn't make my goal for January 1st. So what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> right? It's sure. the calendar. It's just a calendar. But we get so tied into the fact that if we don't have it together for Monday, if we don't have it together for quarter one or whatever, we can't do it. So let's just like, we're done with that. Knowing that your season can be whenever you want it to be. It can be how long you want it to be. So I just mentioned quarter one for me is busy, but maybe it's just one month. Maybe it's just one week, right? But it's identifying it. So once you've figured out kind of your vision, right? Look at your next 12 months, like what's happening so you can plan your goals. I want you to make sure inside that season, you have four different mini seasons. And these are a season of push, a season of planning, a season of rest, and a season of fun. So if we're looking at all four of these seasons, let's pretend for this example, our season is a month long. And we're like, all right, this is my month. I want to make sure I have all four of these. They don't have to be equal. It's not saying four weeks, four months. Again, everyone's like, give me the formula. No formula. You decide what it is based on what you need. And you make sure you have these four things in. So the season of planning is so important. This is maybe like 
on Fridays for your week, you decide is your planning season or your planning day. That's what I do. We take a flight Friday so we can plan out the rest of the week and close up shop on admin things. Maybe the third week of your month, you're like, that's when I'm going to plan out my goals for the next month. But instead, we just jump in. We're like, I'm just going to do the thing. When we pause and actually plan out what we need, right, whether it's going on a Disney vacation or planning out, you know, your health goals or your family goals, whatever it is, you're setting yourself up for success because you're not just jumping in. So adding into whatever your season is, is a little mini season of just planning. Because when you do that, you can then move into what I call the season of push because I don't like the word hustle. So we're going to use push because, you know, we're just going to change the word. Like, let's reclaim it and say, we know we're going to have to do it right? Like, you know, you have a busy work season, you know, you have a busy home season. My son is in travel basketball, for example, right? Like, so we know what that is like around here. He plays on three different teams. That's our push season for him. All right. We know that's coming. So instead of pretending like there's something wrong with us, if we're working or, uh, you know, being unaligned and just pushing all the time, just know that it's there and that the other seasons are coming. So maybe you're looking at your week and you're like, okay, Monday through Thursday, that's my season of push. That's when I know I'm going to work. I'm going to get it done. Friday, I'm going to have my planning. So knowing that there's like a light at the end of the tunnel, it allows us to not feel as guilty when we are pushing or working or focusing. But the thing that's going to lead you to not burning out is the last two mini seasons And that's fun and rest, which admittedly are like the most challenging for me. I am like an Enneagram three, like I am a driven person, like I love it. But if I don't rest and have fun, I'm going to burn out and be no good at all. And so for you, you might know that I was talking to someone the other day and I think they said there were, I don't know Enneagrams, but there were seven and they were like sevens like need a lot of fun and stuff. So they might need more time in their season for fun. That's okay. Like that's how you're wired and built in what you need. So I make sure that I have Saturdays or rest days for me. Like I'm like, all right, I literally don't do anything if I don't feel like it. Like I really just don't. I don't go to birthday parties or baby. Like if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it because I know that I need time to just decompress. I like to read books, like read a good book and enjoy that rest. Um, And then adding in the fun, because I think as busy moms, especially ambitious moms, we don't give that to ourselves. Like we feel like we have to earn fun. So whatever that looks like to you, do it. And I think it's important in the long run, whether your season is a week, it's a month, or it's the whole quarter that you have some parts of those four in. So I know for me, this is, you know, my heavy push season. I've got some rest built into my weekends. We've got time for planning in as well. But in April, my husband and I, we planned a cruise, which was just canceled last weekend. So we're going to find something else to do. But we planned something because I said, I need this. Like I need to stop and celebrate because when we don't stop and have fun and allow ourselves that joy, we become these goal chasers who are just like, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. And you don't stop and say, wow, that was amazing. I did that. Now I'm going to reflect on it. Yeah. And I think the thing about being intentional about planning both the season and the seasons within the season are that instead of hustling by default, like I feel like people feel like they need to hustle, but instead you're taking back ownership of that calendar and you're saying, yes, I will hustle. Yes, I will do this thing and I will do it on purpose, during these days, during these hours, during this time. And when I close my laptop and walk to the kitchen for dinner, I'm not going to be pushing anymore because I'm switching gears and I'm going to be present and we're going to have game night and that's going to be fun. And those things can exist within the same season. And I love how you say that it's not because that's what my brain does. Okay. One month, four seasons, like week one is this week two is this. No, it's, it can be, you can have four seasons during one day. If you're spending an hour of fun with your family and then an hour reading your book and meditating before bed, like that can be your season of fun and your season of rest within a 24 hour period. Also, Um, it just gives you so much more ownership. Well, I love that you said that reclaiming piece, because I think that a lot of times we are living by default and we feel like we have to live a certain way. And you're completely right. You can have one day that's that season. And that is what's going to help you decide what you need. And it's not about this is how much time I want to push. Like, what do you actually need to be um, well rested and well rounded and not feeling resentful towards your family? or work, not feeling guilty about the fact, like I made it a commitment to myself in 2021 that when, cause my kids are at school when they're home, like, no, 
Like I'm done. I work one night a week by choice because I work with moms and I know a lot of them work during the day. And so I keep one night open for calls and maybe I'll do others if I feel like it. But otherwise I was like, I'm not doing it because I'm burning out again. I'm doing everything for everyone else's schedule and I'm not living aligned to me. And I think that's really key is allowing yourself to customize and trusting yourself enough to know that it will change. You will learn how to do it. You'll learn what it feels like. And you will start to know when, like I can tell right away now when I'm heading down a path to burnout. Um, And even on my team, like we very much call each other out when we can feel it on each other. I'll have team members say like, Kara, you have to take some days off your schedule right now. Um, And that happened in December. We were launching my membership and um, my like right hand, she was like, you don't have any days off in December because we launch over the holidays. She was like, I think you should take a day completely off and just cancel this one call. And I think people will understand. And I was so like, oh my gosh, but we did it. Everybody understands. And my people say to me now that they appreciate that I modeled those boundaries because they need to learn how to do it too. Busy working mom. I used to wear it like a badge of honor. Then I realized that I was drowning in to-dos and running around like a lunatic, all because this key piece was missing. I wasn't clear on what my deeply held values were. And when everything's important, nothing is important. Now that I've done the work and figured out what I value most, it makes life so much easier. Those core values serve as the compass for the direction of my life, and they inform my heck yes and my hell no responses to each and every opportunity. I've taken the process to curate core values and boiled it down into three simple steps. I've laid out the exact process to gain clarity so you can start applying your deeply held values to -to day-to-day life. To start living a purpose-driven life full of what you love and void of all that other shit, download your core value curator today. The link's waiting for you in the show notes. So if someone is listening and they are saying that life that you're talking about where you're living in alignment and you know what matters to you, that sounds great, but I literally don't even know where to start. Like, how do I figure out how to prioritize? How can I figure out what matters to me? And is it going to be different than what matters to you? Yeah. I think it's a process of redefining what priorities actually mean. You know, if I was to say to a mom, like, what's your top priority right now? I'd be like, my kids, right? Always. My kids, always. of course. It's always the default. But what happens when we do this? Then if we're only focusing on our priority, the kids, where's all of mom's goals? Where's all the tiny tasks? Where's the work stuff? And we become that mommy martyr. And this is the problem I see with the concept of the big three. So I teach it a little bit differently. I'm sure you've heard this where it's like pick three things to focus on for your priorities each day. I think it's a great concept. But if you were to say, what are your big three every day? You're like, well, these are three things that I have to get done. And then we're back on the hamster wheel of living in um, urgent. So um, I talk about priority matrices in the book and I learned it from, it's the Eisenhower matrix about like living in that urgent Q1, right? Like we're always living there. Well, what I like to encourage moms to do is start with what I call micro priorities, which um, are just smaller priorities based on your categories and roles. That's a lot of what I teach is like these tinier chunks, like take it a step back first. So go, if you're listening and you're driving, don't do this, but if you, you know, you can write or whatever, break down, like what are my roles and my categories that I play, right? So I'm a mom and I'm a wife. I also own a business. And even inside your business, I have people members that they're doing it now for their business. Like, right, I have to do my podcasts and I'm doing the summit and I'm writing emails and social, like whatever those roles are, And then I want you to brain dump out all the things that you want to accomplish for your season. Again, quarter, month, whatever you're deciding. I I think it should be smaller than a year. I teach a quarterly goal setting process because a year is just too big. It's not enough um, container um, for you to do it. And I want you to write down like all the things that are important to you in those micro priorities. Now that you have that list, it's a lot. And you're like, oh, like when am I going to find the time for all these things? Well, here's where we get a little bit strategic. Rank them. Which ones, like if you could only accomplish one, pick one in each category, which one would it be? And because the other thing I notice is that people will come to me with way too many goals on their plate, right? We want to do all <laughs> of it right now, right? That's like, I, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, how many goals do you have right now for 2022? Oh, probably 12. Yep. Yep. That's the at average. At least seven, at least seven that 11, like I really 11 would say. Yeah, number, yeah. Um, the average number that I've, I've found when I ask people, um, I don't know why it's just like a random <laughs> number, but it's it's where people are at because we want to do it all now. Instead, pick one micro goal inside your micro priority. You can see I like all these like little meta things where we're inside the inside, right? 
Um, and that's where we start to focus our priorities. So once you've got them identified and you're like, great. So let me think of like a work example, right? Like, um, my first goal is like, I need to do a new podcast intro. Okay. That's like the most important thing in podcasting. Well, when it comes to like email marketing, I need to set up, I have someone who sends most of my emails, but I need to set up like our content plan, right? Like what's my, my big ones now that I've got a micro focus, it is so much easier for me to say, what am I working on when? And I teach a time blocking system with batching, but this allows you to then compartmentalize because it's really hard to compartmentalize as, as working moms, right? Um, but it allows you to compartmentalize a little bit because if you say, great, Monday from nine to 12 is my podcast day, what's my first thing I want to work on? And I actually encourage people when they're batching this way and breaking time blocks out to pick a big three for each block but they shouldn't be huge, right? These are 15 to 20 minute tasks inside each block. And that way you're slowly breaking down projects. You're, you know, I'm not going to say, okay, my big three is I've got to record all of February's podcast episodes. <laughs> Do they no. need to get done? Yes, but let's break them down. Okay, so my big three is I'm going to record a new intro, record one episode, and then do some, you know, IG intros for them because we batch those and then we use them later. Those are my three. That's it. If I can get those three done, it's going to move me along. And then next time I'm in my podcast block, I kind of know where to move from there. And I think that allows us to laser focus in on what actually needs to get done because what we do is the thing where everything is really important all the time. And if everything is important and urgent, nothing is actually important. And then we start doing things to procrastinate. We start to get behind. We're working on things not strategically. And then we're shuffling around trying to figure it out. So I think that it's starting with organizing your categories and your roles, brain dumping out what you want to accomplish by whatever your end date is. Make sure you give yourself an end date on that. And then taking those things and piecing them slowly into your schedule, but just making sure they're, they're 15 to 20 minute tasks um, because too, too big, our brain starts to do that action paralysis. We're like, oh yeah, I can't even think about that right now. And I think, so this is something that you and I both have identified with in the past and probably I have said it as early as this morning. Um, we were busy, especially as working moms like a badge of honor. So we, you know, you say, Hey, how are you, Kara? And you say, I'm good. The kid a bit was so busy, right? Like so busy. Like we're like, you can guarantee that a working mom who's doing all the things is going to say, I'm so, so busy. So how do we switch our mindset? So like you're teaching productivity and goal setting and time blocking and all of these things that are going to help you even in even the busiest seasons. But how do we kind of take off that identity of busy working mom and step into what are we if we're not busy working moms? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I have a secret that I'm going to share. Did you know you did not have to fill up every line of your planner? Like, it's not a law. Like, you will not get arrested and go to jail because you didn't fill it up. And I know, you know, obviously I'm joking, but I think we feel like we have to. And I think the first step to that is actually a little bit of what you said is detaching our identity from busy. And I think there's a lot of reasons people struggle to change in general. Um, one is that who am I if not, right? This is who I am. And if I'm not busy all the time, then I have to stop and like think about my feelings or the problems and like nobody wants to do that, right? So first it's figuring out why are you holding on to busy? Another reason I find that we hold on to busy is because it gives us connection. So when uh, you get around another group of moms, what tends to happen? I call it the, uh, you know, struggle Olympics. We like to complain <laughs> over who yes. is busier, right? Like who's winning? Oh, well, my husband doesn't help with this. Oh my gosh, you should see the laundry he <laughs> leaves. And it throws it next to the floor. Me too. And we do it because it allows us to feel less alone. And I think a lot of times our brains like to keep us safe. And our brain is saying to us, wait, if I don't have this in common with you, if I'm not a hot mess mom, or if I'm not just going all the time, will I be able to connect with other, what will I talk to them about? Will I still have that connection? So it's kind of asking yourself, wait, am I doing this because I like the connection? And I will tell you, that was it for me. Like, I was like, well, if I don't have my kids in a hundred activities, um, because we had a season where my kids were in a lot of activities and I actually just recently over in January, we stopped almost all of my kids activities except for the oldest. Um, and my one daughter does gymnastics, but we went from like seven different activities, which was our season, right? 
because my in the summer, like my daughter does cheer, my husband coaches my son's football, like there's a lot. And we told ourselves for winter because it was a busy work season, we're just not going to do that. And I went through this thing where my husband's like, why do you feel like you need to pick something else? Because I was like, oh, I found an art class. And he's like, eh, what are we doing here? Like we talked about this and I'm like, right. Because I'm like, will I be able to connect with other moms who are juggling all the sports? Will I have something to talk to them about? And I realized that was something that I was clinging to, right? So one of them is it's our identity. The other is it takes away that connection piece um, from us. But the other is the fear. It keeps us safe to be busy because if we are busy, quote unquote, right? Because even though sometimes I think we have a lot on our planner, it doesn't actually like, it means we're doing stuff, but it doesn't mean we're getting anything actually done. So if we're busy and we're scrambling and we don't have time for our goals, we cannot try and fail. So like, I don't even have the time to work on training to run a marathon. So, I mean, of course I, you know, I wouldn't fail because what if I tell people I'm going to do it and what if it's really hard and what if I'm not good at it? And then I actually don't accomplish this goal and people are, might be like, I told you so. Now, nobody might actually say that, but that's what we think. Right. And so the fear in our brains is saying, if I just keep myself busy and I work on it when the kids are in a different season, when they're at school, or this is different, or when things are all aligned and perfect. When things calm down. When, yeah, th- oh, when, please, things, how, calm down. when things calm down, right? It's like, that's never going to happen. But we think that if we keep the busy at the forefront, well, then we're not even giving ourselves a chance to fail. And that feels like a safe space. So I think the first conversation you need to have with yourself is, what am I actually clinging to? Um, and, and what benefit am I getting from this? Because often we have these benefits that we don't even like, wait, I'm actually benefiting from just being stressed out and busy. Well, yeah, because maybe like people won't ask you to do other things because they know you have a lot going on or maybe you get sympathy, right? Like maybe every time you call your mom and you tell her how busy she is, she feeds that sympathy that you need to make you feel less alone, right? You're benefiting from this mindset of I must be busy or I'm not worthy. I'm not successful. I'm not a good mom. And I think that it takes a lot of digging to realize what is it for you? And when you identify it, then it's the the process of trying to disprove that belief so that you can move past it. And so if this is resonating with people, if they're saying that is me, I am that busy mom, I wish I had a better system or something else to do. Tell us more about the book and where we can go to find it and you online. Sure. Yeah, I'm super excited about the book. Um, It is coming out January 23rd officially. So whenever this airs, it'll probably be out because that is very, very soon. Um, And it is called The 15-Minute Formula, uh, How Busy Moms Can Ditch the Guilt, Say Yes to What Matters, and Conquer Their Goals. And it honestly came from the fact that I realized there was nothing really quality out there that was talking productivity for moms. It was like hustle, go, business, do. But it wasn't about this piece of taking away the shame of not being productive um, and instead putting in the reality of what it's like to be a mom, juggling all the things and trying to get done what actually matters. Um, And I actually used all of the framework that I teach in the book to write the book, like the breaking down the goals, figuring the seasons, the buffer time, everything I teach in the book, that's exactly how I got it done in nine months. Um, And I think that this book is going to just hit so many moms where they need to hear it because it's practical. Each uh, chapter has like action steps. There's a free workbook that goes with it and a Trello board because I'm kind of a Trello addict. So if you like Trello, there's a Trello board for it, of course. My people were like, of course, there's a Trello board. But um, there's some really good accompanying guides. And it's all about tiny chunks in it. Um, In the workbook, I've actually broken the book down into how you could read the book in 15 minutes a day and finish it in a month. So it's not that book that you put on the shelf. It's that book that you're like, cool, I'm sitting outside my kid's room while they go to bed. That's when I read um, while they like get their self together and I can read a couple pages and start moving. And I think if you're a mom out there who's looking to figure out how do I have time for me without burning out, without overwhelm and without feeling like I have to fill every line of the planner, uh, you're going to love it. So you can get the book on Amazon right now if you just search the 15 minute formula. And if you go to the 15 minute formula dot com slash free, you also link the book, but you can get the free workbook that goes with it. 
Yeah. And I have read it. I haven't yet finished it, but I'm a few days in and absolutely um, you're speaking right to me. The stories that you're telling, the experiences that you're sharing um, really kind of hooked me and made me feel like this book is for me as a busy working mom who's, oh, by the way, running a business and has five kids and two dogs and one very overgrown kid pretending to be an adult. Um <laughs> I love it. It's very practical. I've already started applying the tips in it. So everyone should absolutely go and check it out. Thank you. I'm glad that you dove into it. That that makes me very happy because I will tell you, there's this scary thing when you put stuff into the world, isn't there? And you're like, how's this going to land? Right? Like this, <laughs> this makes sense to me, but I really, I really hope it resonates um, with moms because I just know for me, and there's a lot of my journey, I, you know, I didn't tell in our short time together, but like I felt so lonely as a mom, I felt mm, like nobody understood same. where I was coming from. I dealt with postpartum anxiety and depression and like that feeling of connecting what I did with who I was as a person and that shame, like it lived inside of me for so long. And I hope it kind of opens these doors for moms who might feel the same, realizing that they're worth it and that they've got this. And and if they don't, if they have days where they don't got it, that that's okay too. Yeah. I think that when people say it takes a village, the thing that they don't say is that village is only helpful if the other women in your village are willing to be vulnerable and to share their story and to say, me too, this is hard. Like I struggle, like it may seem like I have my stuff all together, but I don't, no one does. And we need to be saying that loudly and shouting it from the rooftops because there are other moms out there who felt like you and I felt, who felt like they were alone. They were the only one to walk through this season. They were the only one to feel burned out. They were the only one to feel like, I don't even enjoy playing with my kids and I don't know why. All of those things are totally normal in this process. So thank you for sharing your story and normalizing the struggle. I think we need more of that. And thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Tracy, thank you so much. This was a fun chat. I'm doing a victory dance right now because you did it. You took the time to tune in, to reach for a better life, and to take care of you. Did our time together go by way too fast for anyone else? Head to fulfilledasamom.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's show. You now have the tools and knowledge to change your life. Go blaze your trail, take that step, make the shift, and do the work to create fulfillment in your life today.